praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the worlds, the creator of everything, the one who has absolute power and perfect knowledge, the one who does what he wills and answers to no one, the one who describes himself as indiscriminately compassionate and intimately loving, and peace and blessings be upon his final messenger, our Master Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the beloved of Allah, the seal of the prophets, and the mercy sent unto all mankind. I want to remind all of you to perform the Uthiyah, uh, also known as the Qurbani. Um, uh, if you haven't already done so, or have someone else to do it for you, this is extremely important. Also to remind you of the additional takbirat, uh, which you will do after every thawb salah. Uh, and this will uh, take place, you do this continuously, uh, today and in the following three days called the Ayam Tashrif. Uh, so on Monday, Asr time, that's when you'll stop doing the Takbirat. And this is also a wajib. There's also no fasting today, obviously, or in the following three days. So the first available day to fast is on Tuesday, inshallah ta'ala. So in this khutbah, I want to talk about one of the greatest theological virtues uh, in our tradition, the virtue of shukr or gratitude. Uh, and its place or its centrality in the Qur'an. Many of the ulama nowadays speak a lot about shukr, a lot about uh, gratitude due to our uh, current state uh, as a Muslim community in America. I'll get back to that a little bit later, inshallah ta'ala. The tri-literal root shakara from uh, where shukr comes from occurs 70 time, 75 times in the Qur'an. 46 times as a verb and 29 times as a noun. Uh, in Surah Ibrahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِدَنَّكُمْ He says, if you just show a little bit of gratitude, in شَكَرْتُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ Just a little bit of gratitude. لَأَزِدَنَّكُمْ Very strong language. Very heavily emphasized in the Arabic. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here, He uses the first person as opposed to a royal plural to further emphasize the point that if you show a little bit of gratitude, Certainly, I will increase you. And notice here, there's no specifying element. There's no ten years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't say, uh, doesn't specify, I'll increase you in knowledge or in wealth or in deen or dunya. He leaves it open. So conceivably, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we show a little bit of gratitude, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will increase us in all good things. And we should have a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to show gratitude, not only to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as the ulama said, but to show gratitude, to show gratitude to human beings as well. The Prophet وسلم, he said, Lam nas, Lam Whoever does not show gratitude to human beings has not showed gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for different ni'am, for different blessings, for the blessing of the Prophet. وسلم. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing of our teachers. We thank uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing of our employers. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing of our civic leaders. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the blessing of our friends and relatives. One of my teachers said that this ayah, the in shakartum la izidanakum, this is quote, a spiritual law, a spiritual equation, that gratitude equals increase. We'll come back to this ayah inshallah ta'ala. But let's define gratitude. Ahmad ibn Ajiba rahimahullah ta'ala in his famous lexicon. He defines gratitude, shukr. He says, gratitude is the joy of the heart at receiving some benefaction. فَرُحُ الْقَلْبِ بِحُسُولِ النِّعْمَةِ Along with using the limbs of the body to obey the benefactor, المُنْعِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And humbly acknowledging that the benefactor is Allah in one's heart and mind. So he goes on to say that gratitude has three expressions based on three degrees. The first degree is shukrun bil lisan is expressing gratitude by verbal expression, by acknowledging the gift, the ni'mah, the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with humility and lowliness. اِعْتِرَافُهُ بِنِعْمَتِهِ بِنَعْتِ الْإِسْتِكَانَ He says. And he says about this, for شُكْرُ الْعَمَّةِ الثَّنَاءُ بِالْلِسَانِ So he says the common people, the laity, they express gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by verbal praise, only by verbal praise. This is how the amma, this is the laity, the commoners, right? So they simply say, Alhamdulillah. 
And this is one of the quickest and easiest ways of showing gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We say on the tongue, Alhamdulillah. But then the second degree, the higher degree, he says, Shukrun bil badan, is to express gratitude with the body by its eagerness to serve. Ittisafahu bil khidmah. And he says, Shukrun khafsa. He says, the gratitude of the elect. So you have the gratitude of the common people, which is just to say, Alhamdulillah, with the tongue. But then he says, there's a gratitude that is shown by the khafsa, by the elect. Al khidmatu bil arkan. And this is by service to the pillars of the religion. So the elect, the khasa, are motivated by their gratitude to action. I'malu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'malu ala Dawood. Amal, work, O house of David, shukran, out of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa qalilun min ibadi shakur And just a few are my servants that show gratitude. And then the third degree, he says, is shukran bil qalb is a type of gratitude that is manifested into the heart. And like witnessing the benefactor in the, benef- in the benefactor. He says, Shuhudul mun'in in the husul al-ni'ma. A deep internal appreciation and love for the mun'in. The mun'in is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he says, it was shukru khasat al khasa. He says that gratitude expressed by the elect of the elect. So you have gratitude of the common people. Just to say Alhamdulillah on the tongue. You have the gratitude of the elect, which is to say Alhamdulillah on the tongue, and then be motivated to good action, righteous action. And then he says the gratitude of the elect of the elect. Al istighraq fi shuhud al mannan is literally an immersion, an absorption in the witnessing of the giver, al mannan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the tongue, the body, and the heart. So for example, you get a pay raise at work. You say, Alhamdulillah. Then that should motivate you. Give some extra sadaqah as a gesture of thanksgiving. You don't have to give Allah. Just as a gesture of thanksgiving that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you a ni'mah and you want to show shukr, you want to show gratitude. And then in your heart, you try to preserve that deep feeling of appreciation and love for the mun'im, for al-mannan. The ulama tell the story of the isolated abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That there was a man who was in isolation for a hundred years doing nothing but ibadat. He never disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he died and on the Yom al Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him, Enter my paradise, bi rahmati, by my mercy. And he said, No, my Lord, bi amali, by my works. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took all of his good deeds, all of his righteous actions that he had done throughout his entire life and put them on one side of a mizan, one side of a scale. And then he took one ni'mah, the blessing of eyesight, just one ni'mah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put that on the other side of the scale. And as soon as he placed that in no anthropomorphic way on the other side of the scale, this man's good deeds flew up into the air. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, you wish to continue this type of reckoning? And the man said, Rahmati, by your mercy, by your mercy, I shall enter paradise. قُلْ هُوَ الَّذِي أَنْشَاكُمْ وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ Say, who is the one who created you and bestowed upon you hearing and sight and understanding? قَلِيلَ مَا تَشْكُرُونَ little, little thanks do you show. Now oftentimes in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will list His ni'am, His blessings, His gifts, and either say definitively, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ That I did all of these things, I gave all of these things to you. Our humanity, in order for you to be grateful. In other words, to use them properly. This is another definition of shukr. To use the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in ways that are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Use your eyes in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a form of shukr. Use your hands, your words, your talents in a way that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or he says it as an interrogative. He list his, his, his ni'am, his blessings and his gifts. And you'll say, أَفَلَا يَشْكُرُوا Will they not show gratitude? Will they not show gratitude? In other words, will they not utilize these blessings correctly? As Al-Junaid said, gratitude is that Allah is not disobeyed by means of His gifts. And لَا يُعْسَ اللَّهُ بِنِعْمِهِ Gratitude is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not disobeyed by means of His gifts. Now the reason I want to talk about shukr is because as an American Muslim community in these days, 
We have to be very, very careful about our etiquette, our adab with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And usually on Eid, a lot of young people come out. So this is directed mostly towards the young people in high school and in college. This is a time when there's a lot of zeal, a lot of energy, but very little wisdom. It's a deadly combination. That constant complaining, that constant criticizing is dangerous to our spirituality. We have to put things in perspective. If we look around the world, look into our past, what do we really have to complain about? وَأَسْبَقَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً مَبَاطِنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remember this, He says that He showered you, literally He poured down upon you His blessings, His favors, apparent and hidden, that criticizing is for the learned, not for the highly motivated, it's for the highly learned. If you're going to criticize something, <coughs> a people, or a group, or a race, or an institution, if you're going to throw words around like bigot and misogynist and racist and Nazi, if you're going to march around the streets and wave signs at people, if you're going to do that, you better make sure that the evil is truly out there and not in here. You better make sure that the evil is truly out there and not in your own heart. Whenever you want to remember the faults of others, first think about your own faults. To make definitive statements about complex issues based on anecdotal evidence and incomplete information is the height of hubris and is harmful to society, is harmful to specific individuals, is harmful to our spirituality. You know, I can't even go to an interfaith dialogue anymore. Interfaith dialogues have become these platforms of spewing ingratitude. People just complaining about how terrible things are, how terrible the country is. This is what it is now. I remember a time when we used to talk about Allah and His Messenger. We used to give da'wah. It's all based on anecdotal evidence. Anecdotal evidence. No real data. For example, they go up and they say, Oh, I was walking in a mall one time, and somebody said, Hey, Osama, go back to Islam land. You know, the Prophet ﷺ, in Medina, heard worse from people. In Medina, his own city, the Prophet ﷺ, do we really expect this place to be better than Medina? We're going to talk about anecdotal evidence in the last 20 years or so. In my life, maybe three or four times I can remember something, some incident happening to me that I would describe as racist or bigot. I mean, three or four times in 20 years, that's pretty good, right? You need to put things in perspective. We want to talk about anecdotal evidence? I've lived, I've traveled throughout the Muslim majority world. I've been harassed. I've been threatened. Um, I've been discriminated against because of where I was born, because of what my name is, because I have a beard. This is our state. This is happening all over the world. We have to put things in perspective. We don't know how good we have it, to be honest with you. Is this a perfect society? Of course not. It isn't. We have to take a look around the world. Look, take a look around the world. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Don't be ingrates. Put things in perspective. Now the Nasiha Nabawiyah. The prophetic advice, practical steps on how to uh, increase in our shukr. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, look up for akhirah and look down for dunya. Look up for akhirah. Don't look down for akhirah. In other words, don't say to yourself, I pray five times a day, but this cousin of mine, he only prays Jummah. I'm, I'm better than him. It, it breeds complacency. It makes one self-congratulatory, conceited and arrogant, delusional. Look up for Akhirah. I pray five times a day, but this other person over here, he's memorizing the Quran. He studies three hours a day. This is the right attitude. And look down for dunya. Right? Don't look up for dunya. Look down for... So you, you might say, well, I have an apartment. This person has a house. That doesn't mean you can't think about uh, improving your conditions. But what we're talking about here is this constant obsessive discontentment with one's wealth and one's state, one's status. This engenders ingratitude into the heart. You live in an apartment with people that are homeless. Looking up for dunya causes animosity and self-victimization. Eventually you start thinking to yourself, I'm not as good as, as this person. What's wrong? Someone's holding me down. It must be. Then you become a cynic, and an ingrate, delusional, self-entitled. Remember what the Prophet ﷺ said to Mu'ad. He came to Mu'ad and he said, Oh Mu'ad, I love you. And I exhort you to say at the end of every prayer, 
Allahumma a'ini ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadati. We should learn this dua if you don't know it. This is a dua that was taught to Mu'ad by the Prophet sallallahu himself after he confided his love in Mu'ad. He took his hand and said, I love you. Learn this dua. How incredibly powerful is this dua? Oh God, help me. Help me to remember you. <laughs> help me to be grateful to you. And help me beautify your worship. You know, there was a certain king who had it all, except qana'ah, contentment. And he would dress up sometimes as a commoner and walk around the wilderness around his castle. And it just so happens he saw a pauper, a very poor man, in the distance. And this pauper was, was singing the preaching, dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was saying, subhanallah, subhanallah, subhanallah. So this king approached this man and he said, why, what makes you so joyous? And the pauper said, why shouldn't I be? I have clothes that cover my nakedness. I have a glass of water. I have scraps of uh, bread. A blue sky. Birds are chirping. I have the dhikr of Allah spinning on my tongue and in my heart. Why shouldn't I be? Why shouldn't I give gratitude? And the king said, you know, I'm the king of this kingdom. And I'm just depressed. So the pauper said to him, you know, if you drank half a glass of water and you were not able to excrete that water, and it was going to cause an infection and eventually kill you. How much would you give to be able to just get rid of that half a glass of water from your system, from your body? The king said, half my kingdom. And then he said, if you were crawling through the burning desert, about to die of thirst, and somebody offered you a half a glass of water, which would save your life long enough for someone to rescue you, how much would you give? He said, half of my kingdom. So he said, let me get this straight. Your, all of your kingdom is worth a glass of water. He said, yes. And the pauper said, I have that. I also have bread. I have clothes that cover my nakedness. I have loose ties, birds chirping, and the dhikr of Allah spinning on my tongue and in my heart. This is a hyperbolic example, but it gets the point across. We need to put things in perspective. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that a man in the court of Sulaiman alayhi salam, who is described as one who had knowledge of the revelation, and that he endahu ilmu min al-kitab. This person made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the throne of Bilqis, the queen of Sheba, was brought to Sulaiman alayhi salam. Imam Tabari in Qurtubi said this man actually uttered an ismul a'zam, the sacred name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Ibn Mas'ud said this man is none other than the enigmatic Khidr alayhi salam. Imam al-Razi says it's actually describing Sulaiman alayhi salam himself. So there is opinion regardless. When the throne was brought in the presence of Sulaiman alayhi salam, what did he say? Hadha min fadli rabbi. He said, this is from the grace of my Lord in order to test me. Am I grateful or do I disbelieve? So in the Quran, in the rhetoric of the Quran, in Semitic rhetoric in general, there is a concept called binarity. Binarity means dualism, very prevalent in Semitic literature. And a very common type of binarity is called parataxis, juxtaposition, right? This is when the Quran presents two ideas or concepts, intention or in agreement. So we see from the Quran that shukur, gratitude, and kufur, disbelief, are juxtaposed parataxically. They are intention, they are antonyms, they are opposites. In other words, ingratitude is a form of kufr. To put it differently, in the Quran, the word for ingrate is kafir. The word for ingrate is kafir. Going back to this ayah that your Lord declared. If you show a little bit of gratitude, I will increase you. So these two verbs, shakartum and kafartum, are juxtaposed. Because they are opposites. In other words, to be ungrateful is to disbelieve. Now you see how grave the issue is here. How grave the concern is here. How concerned we should be about this idea of ingratitude. Constant complaining. In another ayah, remember me so that I might remember you. Be grateful to me and do not disbelieve. Literally, be grateful to me and do not be ungrateful in meaning. <clears throat> in 
إن هديناه السبيل إما شاكلا إما شاكلا وإما كفورا. We showed the human being the way. Is he going to be grateful, shakir, or kafur, or ungrateful? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, مَا يَفْعَلُ اللَّهُ بِعَبَادِكُمْ What does Allah gain by your punishment? إِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ وَآمَنْتُمْ If you should be grateful and believe. Now we have synonymous juxtaposition. In other words, to be grateful is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ شَاكِرًا وكان الله شاكرا عليما. It's one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Allah is, a, uh, is appreciative of your service. He's also called as shakur the one who is most ready to appreciate service. When it comes to al insan, the shakur is the one who is grateful even when he's deprived. Nuh alayhi salam is called shakura in the Quran. He lost everything in the deluge. And he kept saying, Alhamdulillah, <coughs> Alhamdulillah. The Prophet said, Afala akunu abdan shakura. Shall I not be a grateful servant shakur? Even when I'm deprived, even when I'm deprived. We know the story of Ibrahim ibn Adham and Shaqiq al Balqi. We'll end with this. When Shaqiq al Balqi saw Ibrahim ibn Adham, one of the great saints of the Salaf, and he said to him, Shaykh Ibrahim, give me some words of wisdom. And Ibrahim said, Why don't you give me some first? And Shaqiq al barqi said, well, uh, this is what we say about shukr and sabr. We say, uh, we say, in wajadna shakarna. If we find what we're looking for, then we show gratitude. In lam najid sabarna. And if we don't find what we're looking for, then we show patience. So then Ibrahim ibn Adam, he said, kadarika taf'alul kila. This is what dogs do. This is what dogs do. So what do you say? So Ibrahim ibn Adam, he said, In wajadna atharna. If we find what we're looking for, then we give it out freely, we're selfless. A very high station of ifaq. Wa in lam najid shakarna. And if we don't find what we're looking for, then we show gratitude. If we don't find, if we're deprived of something, we show gratitude. Why? Because we have good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows exactly what's good for us. Maybe He's averting something from us. Have a good opinion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Abudu Qawli Hada. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it from the shakirin. Abudu Qawli Hada. Wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa astaghfirullah alayhi wa lakum. Fa astaghfiru innahu huwa al-ghafiru alayhi. Tuhu ila Allah wa ta'ala wa alayhi. Alhamdulillah al-Rabbil Alameen. Salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah al-Mustafa. وعلى ساداتنا وإمتنا أبي بكر عمر عثمان وعلي ورضي الله تعالى عن أصحاب رسول الله أجمعين نقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد نقول وعود بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم اهدنا فيما هديت وعافنا فيما عافيت وتولنا فيما توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا الشر ما قضيت ربنا اللهم إنا نسألك بنور وجهك الكريم وبحقك على الحسن الخاتم عند الممات لنا ولأحبابنا ولجميع المسلمين يا أرحم الراحمين ربنا لا تزل عيوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من منك رحمة إنك أنت المهاب ربنا أعطنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا من لنا من الخاسرين يا مقلب القلوب الأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك يا مقلب القلوب الأبصار ثبت قلوبنا على طاعتك وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين أيكم مبارك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته